super lightweight, bantamweight, yeah. super bantamweight, middleweight, uh, extra yeah. skinny. Uh, yes, they do have quite wimpy. a few divisions. <clears throat> now, is that good for the sport? I think it is. I think it gives more uh, kids an opportunity to become a champion and have gain recognition, fame, claim, and affluence. And it gives a lot of us the uh, opportunity to participate. I think boxing is the last vestige of the free enterprise system. It's the only business in the world that I know that a guy totally uneducated can become a millionaire. And uh, if he has good common sense, he can then hire sense, you know, in order to have longevity with his affluence. Uh -huh. So I think that boxing is just a great sport. It's an individual sport. It's one-on-one, -on -one, man to man. And I think everyone tries to emulate that. It's not right. Got nothing to do with me, man. Don't mess with my life, I'm telling you now. You're not, you're not gonna mess over my life no more. Oh, take my money, man. Couldn't fight tight because you took my money. You put me to a mental, you took my money. I'd have broke tight the neck, you said you paid me. Everybody has attacked me, and many of the press here can be a living testimony to it. They have castigated me, they have burned me on the oil. It's a thing here that is a law where you threaten a person's life. It's against the law, especially when you keep making these vicious threats. Here's a man that took it upon himself to threaten my life in front of all the illustrious press here. So your life becomes worthless. You're doing it! Boy, oh boy. Um, uh, where should we go? Oh, also in, in this thing, I guess they show old footage and you come to a fight with Frazier and he loses and you leave with form or something like that. Yes, <laughs> that's true. That's business. That's you know very funny. funny. <laughs> you can talk about Don King, you can talk about Bob Air. To me, those guys are thieves. I got caught up with this other piece of shit, Don King, who's a wretched, this is just a wretched, slimy, reptilian motherfucker, right? Um, this is supposed to be my, this is supposed to be my brother, my black brother, right? He's just, um, he's just a bad man, he's a real bad man. He abused you, he, he would throw you, he would, he would, he would kill his mother for a dollar. He is ruthless, he's, un, he's deplorable, he doesn't know how to love anybody. That's just the way he is. The greatest country in the world, man. This is America, baby. Don King, a name synonymous with boxing and a career filled with controversies and championships. From exploitative contracts and criminal convictions to allegations of fixed fights and ties to organized crime, Don King's journey in the world of boxing is nothing short of a wild one. Join us as we uncover the dark and contentious side of one of the most influential and ruthless figures in the history of the sweet science. This is the story of Don King's controversies in boxing, Donald King, the enigmatic boxing impresario renowned for orchestrating some of the most infamous bouts in boxing history, was born on August 20th, 1931, amidst the modest environs of Cleveland, Ohio. In the early chapters of his life, a path different from boxing promotion beckoned. The young King had initially aspired to a career in law and embarked on a journey of knowledge at Western Reserve University. However, he would soon drop out. Destiny had other designs for him. Instead, he found himself amidst the tumultuous world of sports betting, assuming the role of a bookkeeper at a clandestine betting ring in Cleveland. It was within these illicit precincts that the roots of his controversial legacy began to take hold. The first dark page in his narrative was to be written in 1954, when King, aged 23, found himself facing a murder charge that threatened to cast a long shadow over his future. He had shot and killed a man named Hillary Brown, who was reportedly attempting to rob one of King's gambling houses. When the case was brought before the court, Don King mounted a defense, asserting that he had acted in self-defense during the confrontation. Remarkably, the court ruled in his favor, deeming the incident a justifiable homicide. This pivotal verdict allowed Don King to walk free. On April 20th, 1966, Don King, still entrenched in the numbers game, found himself embroiled in yet another fateful encounter. This time, it was one of Don King's own employees, a 34-year-old man by the name of Sam Garrett. The incident took place at the crossroads of Cedar Avenue and East 100th Street in Cleveland. The catalyst for this confrontation was a dispute over money. King claimed that Garrett owed him $900, while Garrett vehemently insisted that he only owed his boss $600. The disagreement turned nasty, escalating into a street brawl, 
and though the precise details of the fight are a matter of some contention, witnesses recounted a grim scene. According to reports, King allegedly kicked Garrett in the head multiple times and even struck him with a 38 caliber revolver before two Cleveland detectives intervened, pulling King off Garrett. Tragically, Garrett succumbed to his injuries five days later while in the hospital. After just four hours of deliberation, a jury of eight women and four men convicted Don King of second-degree murder, a verdict that brought with it a possible sentence of life imprisonment. However, the charge was later reduced to voluntary manslaughter, and King spent just three years and 11 months in the Marion Correctional Institution of Marion, Ohio. In this turbulent period of his life, notable figures stepped forth as allies in King's defense. A pantheon of influential advocates, including Ohio Governor Jim Rhodes, civil rights luminary Jesse Jackson, Coretta Scott King, George Voinovich, Art Medell, and Gabe Paul, who rallied to mitigate the severity of his sentence. These alliances would prove pivotal in shaping Don King's trajectory, propelling him from the shadows of his tumultuous past to the center stage of the boxing world, where controversy and acclaim would intertwine in his extraordinary story. Don King's foray into the world of boxing was an unconventional journey. In 1974, Don King organized a charity boxing match featuring Muhammad Ali to benefit Forest City Hospital, an underfunded care center outside King's hometown of Cleveland. At first glance, it seemed like a moment of pride for the boxing promoter, but the true story lied beneath the surface. A revealing incident came to light during an episode of ESPN's Sports Century series, where Don Elbaum, a fellow boxing promoter, made some startling allegations. Despite the event's apparent charitable nature, a deeper examination of the financial records told a different tale. Of the $85,000 generated from ticket sales for the charity event, only $1,500 found its way to the hospital. What's truly astonishing is that a despicable 83% of the purse remained with King, which would become a standard practice for the boxing promoter's business. In 1974, he orchestrated one of the defining moments of his career the historic Rumble in the Jungle. This historic showdown featured the legendary Muhammad Ali squaring off against George Foreman in Zaire. The anticipation was high, with a staggering prize purse of $10 million, an unprecedented sum in boxing history at the time. Barely a year later, in 1975, King orchestrated yet another legendary clash, this time in Manila, Philippines. The event was aptly named The Thrilla in Manila and featured a fierce 14-round battle between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. It was an unforgettable showdown that further solidified King's reputation as a premier boxing promoter. In 1975, Don King orchestrated Muhammad Ali's match against the journeyman fighter Chuck Wepner, a bout that witnessed Ali hitting the canvas in one of the four knockdowns during his career. Remarkably, this fight is often credited with inspiring Sylvester Stallone to craft the screenplay for the iconic film Rocky a year later. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, Don King continued to reign supreme in the boxing world, promoting some of the most iconic boxers in the sport, including legends like Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, Julio Cesar Chavez, Aaron Pryor, Bernard Hopkins, Ricardo Lopez, Salvador Sanchez, Wilfredo Gomez, and many others. His ability to secure high-stakes matches and multi-million dollar deals for his fighters set him apart in the boxing world. Following the triumphant performance of the 1976 U.S. Olympic team, securing a remarkable five gold medals, Don King seized an opportunity to propose a televised national boxing tournament to the network ABC. Eager to enhance the event's prestige, King allegedly resorted to controversial measures by purportedly influencing The Ring magazine, a respected authority on boxing during that era. He aimed to manipulate the track records and rankings of the tournament's participants, casting a shadow of doubt over the tournament's integrity. The controversy surrounding the tournament escalated when a participating fighter divulged to the media that the competition was rigged in favor of those with contractual affiliations to King. Shockingly, he revealed that he was informed of his impending loss in his next fight, even before arriving at the venue. His revelations triggered a wave of accusations as more boxers stepped forward with allegations of underhanded payoffs. The mounting scandal led to ABC's decision to terminate the tournament, raising questions about the ethics and transparency of the sport. In 1982, 
Don King operated on the belief that the allure of cold, hard cash would outweigh the appeal of a mere written check in the eyes of most fighters. His judgment, more often than not, proved accurate. A notable case was the iconic Muhammad Ali, who found himself shortchanged by a staggering $1.2 million following his historic Thrilla in Manila comeback, bout against Joe Frazier, a fight marred by financial disputes. In response, Muhammad Ali took legal action against the event's promoter, none other than Don King himself. In a surprising turn of events, King dispatched a bundle of $50,000 in cash to the hospitalized Ali. However, this gift came with a significant condition attached. Ali would be required to sign documents effectively dropping the million-dollar lawsuit he had filed. Whether motivated by a need for immediate funds or influenced by the state of his health, Ali agreed to settle the matter, relinquishing his substantial lawsuit for a comparatively modest $50,000. In 1982, following a title bout with Jerry Cooney, Larry Holmes found himself shortchanged by a substantial $300,000 courtesy of Don King. Several years later, during King's management of Michael Jackson's victory tour, Holmes pursued legal action against King, citing a flagrant and fraudulent attempt to withhold a significant sum of money. Ultimately, Holmes settled for a mere $100,000, underscoring more contentious financial dealings that sometimes unfolded under King's promotions. In 1986, following a successful title defense against Frank Bruno in London, two-time world heavyweight champion Tim Witherspoon was promised a substantial $2 million purse. However, in classic Don King fashion, Witherspoon was handed a mere $100,000 check. This sharp disparity between promise and payout left Witherspoon disheartened and furious, especially after years of contentious interactions with King. Regrettably, Witherspoon's disappointment would culminate in a devastating loss, as he faced a first-round knockout by James Bonecrusher Smith in his third title defense. In the aftermath of this defeat, Witherspoon opted to take legal action against Don King and his son Carl. His lawsuit was based on claims of fraud and conflicts of interest, with a staggering demand of $25 million in compensation. During the legal proceedings, King employed tactics that sidelined Witherspoon from a title bout and purposefully prolonged the court case, significantly draining Witherspoon's prime years as a professional boxer. Ultimately, Witherspoon reached an out-of-court settlement for $1 million or is a fraction of what he was rightfully owed and what his potential earnings could have been. Epitomizing the turbulent and often controversial relationship between fighters and promoters in the world of boxing, during the 1980s, Don King's connections to organized crime could be traced back to his early days as a numbers runner in the Cleveland Projects. However, his associations took a more dubious turn in 1991, when a Sports Illustrated report shed light on his links to prominent figures like John Gotti and Matthew Matty the Horse, Ian Yellow. The article further alleged that King had engaged in bribery to secure a reduction in his 1966 second-degree murder conviction to manslaughter implicating a Cleveland judge in the process. According to Sports Illustrated, an undercover FBI agent, posing as a wealthy drug dealer, initiated contact with King with the aim of laundering money through his boxing promotion company. Their initial meeting was orchestrated by a Capo affiliate with the Colombo crime family. Subsequently, the agent encountered a member of the Genovese family, who asserted that King was associated with their organization, stating, he's with us. King would later face an indictment for tax evasion, yet once again, managed to elude the charges, leaving more waves of controversy surrounding his connections and legal entanglements. On March 17, 1990, another controversy unfolded in the boxing world involving Don King, his represented boxer at the time, Meldrick Taylor, and fellow promoter, Don Elbaum. Taylor had been promised a substantial purse of $1.3 million, but when the time came, the check he received amounted to only $300,000. Elbaum alleged that when Taylor protested this glaring discrepancy, King resorted to threatening Taylor, suggesting he could have the boxer killed. The turbulent beef took a more public turn when one of the most highly anticipated matchups of the early 90s was arranged, pitting Taylor against Julio Cesar Chavez. Both fighters were undefeated champions at the time and happened to be represented by King. Meldrick Taylor led on the scorecards for the majority of the fight until the final round, where, with just two seconds remaining, Chavez unleashed a punch that sent Taylor to the canvas. The match was promptly called in Chavez's favor, 
inciting outrage among spectators in the stadium. This famous bout is widely regarded as a stark illustration of the corrupt nature of the sport and the notion that King had the capability to manipulate matches without facing consequences. In 1998, upon discovering the disappearance of more than $20 million in assets, Mike Tyson confronted Don King, which ultimately led to a violent altercation outside a Los Angeles hotel. Tyson recounted this incident in the documentary film Tyson, where he highlighted that his anger was triggered by King's refusal to acknowledge any wrongdoing. In Tyson's own words, I confronted him. He basically denied it and I attacked him in front of these old decrepit white women. Typical Iron Mike fashion. But Tyson's subsequent words left no doubt about his feelings towards King, describing him as a wretched, slimy, reptilian motherfucker. Hey Don, why'd you rob Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali like Barack Obama robbed us? Because I love them. I love them and I thought it was just so nice that they would give me an opportunity for me to make them rich so that I could rob them because they were poor when they came to me and it wasn't nothing to rob. Don King's journey is a tale of ambition, power, greed, success, and achievement that will always be tainted in controversy. His ability to orchestrate some of the most iconic fights in boxing history solidified his reputation as a masterful showman. However, his career was also shadowed by allegations of corruption, fight-fixing, and lawsuits from some of the sport's biggest names, such as the great Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson. In the end, Don King's life and career serve as a testament to the often paradoxical nature of professional boxing. His impact on the sport, while undeniably significant, is a tale of both triumph and turmoil. But as a man who without doubt has many enemies, he also has those who praise him as a momentous figure in the sport of boxing, awarding him with accolades such as being inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame, being voted Man of the Year, being inducted into National Black Hall of Fame, being awarded Promoter of the Decade by the World Boxing Council, receiving the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award Award, and many, many more. What are your thoughts on Don King's impact on the world of boxing? Do you see him as the ruthless man who swindled people? The controversial figure? A legendary promoter that put on some of the biggest fights for generations? Or something in between? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious and keep sleuthing.